You guys, the star is exploding right now up in the sky. You can see it with regular binoculars. Look for it. Holy crap. <sighs> Sorry guys, got a little carried away. I'm Trace. This is our weekly DNews space update. Thanks a lot for tuning in. So, if you like space news, you've likely seen stories about M82's supernova. It's pretty exciting, although not entirely unexpected. The cigar galaxy M82 is known as a starburst galaxy because it produces so many stars. It was in the news back in 2009 when a new formation began throwing radio waves in every direction. Scientists were baffled. Basically, M82 is cool. The stars of M82 are on a short life cycle, coming into being and then dying rapidly, so supernovas should happen every 20 to 30 years. As M82 is about 12 million light years away, these supernovas occurred about the time ants, horses, and snakes began evolving to frolic on Earth's new grasslands. We're only seeing these short-lived stars now because it took so long for the waves to reach Earth. A supernova is part of the natural life cycle of a star, but not all stars or supernovae are created equal. The giant fusion reaction that we call a star must contain a balance of gravitational mass to hold together and an explosive force so they don't collapse. There are two general types of supernova. One type can be triggered by a white dwarf, which is the ancient husk of a burnt out star. It sucks so much gas from a binary companion star that the balance is tipped and it collapses and explodes. It needs about 1.4 times the mass of our sun to do this, of course. Another type of supernovae is caused by the violent death of a massive star. When the star runs out of fuel for fusion, then the balance tips the other way and the star suffers a core collapse. But that isn't what caused this supernova, however. This one was a type 1A supernova. When the white dwarf explodes, it does it very predictably, creating an identifiable level of brightness. Because of this, type 1A supernovae are called the standard candles of the cosmos. Astronomers can use them to measure the distances between galaxies and help us measure things like the scale of the universe and the effects of dark energy. So when M82 was spotted, astronomers got pretty excited, to say the least, especially because it can be seen with regular old binoculars. This is the closest supernova since 1987 and the closest type 1A supernova since 1972. If you'd like to watch an ancient white dwarf from your backyard, grab your spyglass and head to a dark location. The far farther from other light sources, the better. First, find the Big Dipper, called Ursa Major, and use the two endpoints of its pot to draw a line to Polaris, the North Star. That's also the tip of the handle of Ursa Minor, the Little Dipper. Then, backtracking to the approximate halfway point of the two Ursas, you should see M82. It won't reach maximum brightness for a week or two, so you've got some time. For more stargazing tips, check out the links down in the description. And if you need any supernova help, talk to my friend Dr. Ian O'Neill over on Twitter, at Astro engine. He helped me a bunch with this weekly DNews space update, so thanks a lot for that. And if you spot the supernova, be sure you let us know. Thanks for watching, everybody. Subscribe for more videos. Bye.